Who besides nobody does not enjoy a heavyweight bout of colliding giants? Well, that's what we've got on today's ETF Battles. It's a rematch between familiar foes. We've got Art K from Arc Investment Management going up against the Triple Qs from Invesco, going up against Spy from State Street Global Advisors. So who's the top dog? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and welcome to the show. If you need help deciding between or analyzing ETFs versus each other, well, we're your show. Send us your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide, and we'll consider it. We can also do ETF versus mutual fund or ETF versus closed-end fund matchups. So again, send us your ticker symbols, and if we choose your suggested contest, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a shirt. Just by way of quick reminder, if you own at least 100 shares of your favorite ETF or stock and you're not collecting monthly income on those positions, join me for a live event from ETF Guide. It's going to be on Friday, March 17th. It's called Market ATM, and I'll be sharing covered call trades with you to help you supersize your income beyond dividends. Isn't it time that Wall Street pays you for a change? Well, if you're an income-focused investor, you should be there. Hit the link below to register. Today's contest is a classic old-school ETF rematch between old familiars. You've got Art K from Arc Investment Management going up against the Triple Qs from Invesco and Spy from State Street Global Advisors. Now, all of these ETFs have graced ETF battles many times, but the last time we had these funds on the show Market conditions were very different than they are today. Growth was beating value, and meme stocks were the rage. So what about now? Which of these ETFs stands out? Well, judging today's high-stakes contest is Dave Krinsis with ETF Portfolio Management and David Durking with TheStreet.com. Guys, welcome back. Great to see you. Thanks for having me back, Ron. Hey, Ron and Dave. Nice to see you guys. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure strategy, performance, and our mystery category. For mystery, that's where you, our judges, can pick any factor or thing that you feel is crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. I've got the scorekeeping chores. At the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. Now, keep in mind that none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's get started with Dave, Dave Krinsis. The first category is cost. Please kick things off. Well, in this epic aggressive growth equity battle, we have the granddaddy of ETF large cap indexing in SPY versus a heavier tech option in the Qs versus an actively managed tech fund in ARC. So all three are heavy tech and the expense ratios range from nine to 75 basis points which is a wide range because ARC is actively managed. Now, active management can justify a much higher cost than indexing at times, depending on performance and risk. However, that's not the case here. And even though SPY is half the cost of the Qs, the NASDAQ 100 gives you double the impartial technology exposure, which we do favor long term. So on a value adjusted basis, I give the win on cost to QQQ. David Durkin is up next, and you're, we've got a clean-shaven David Durkin. Wow, what a transformation. You look great, partner. Well, you look pretty good clean-shaven, too, so I'm just trying to copy you. Well, thank you very much. It's so kind of you. I'm going to throw out a couple of wild cards right off the bat here. Instead of SPY, I'm going to throw out SPLG, and for the triple Qs, I'm going to offer up QQQM. Uh, those are similar funds from the same issuers. They follow the same indexes. They're just cheaper options for both of them. So uh, I see no reason why investors shouldn't uh, be looking at SPLG, QQQM, or if they want to go with VOO from Vanguard for their S&P 500 or IVP for my shares. You can look at those two. They're all really cheap options. So uh, that being said, I think the, the lowest cost option here will clearly be SPLG, so I'll go with my wildcard pick. It's at three basis points. QQQM is a little lower at 0.15%. Uh, 
but it's still obviously going to be much higher than the S&P 500. Like my fellow Dave said, 0.75% uh, from RK is high, but of course you're going to pay for an actively managed fund, and especially one that uh, dives into uh, much less well-known names in the disruptive innovation and healthcare space. So you can easily make the argument that 75 basis point expense ratio is justified here for that type of strategy. But if we're judging just off of the lowest cost option, I'll give SPLG the win. Exposure strategies are next category, and David, you're still up, so break it down for us. Yeah, I don't think we need to spend much time on Spire or Triple Q. I think everybody pretty much knows what they're about and what they're invested in. Uh, I, I, you know, despite its recent performance, I, I like RK here because it's just such a unique product. It's, uh, it's only got about 2 to 4% overlap between the other two funds, so you're really getting a, a terrific diversifier within your portfolio. And you're obviously getting something that has, you know, real home run potential if, uh, if this strategy is in favor with the market. Of course, if it's not, then, you know, you have something like you've seen over the last year and a half. But uh, as far as what it's invested in, I, I like that it's focused on, like, genomics and fintech and some of these real next generation uh, technologies and innovation. So because it's so unique, I'm going to give that one the win. Dave Krinsis, you're up next for Exposure Strategy. How do you see it? Ron, you know, I love my fellow Dave's uh, wild cards on cost, but we differ on our views on ARC. Um, on Exposure, it's really all about technology and risk control. The passive SPY gives you 26% in tech. The NASDAQ 100 is half tech. And the actively managed ARC is in the middle at 38%. Now, I've been saying for years on ETF battles that the NASDAQ 100 is the next generation S&P, in my opinion. These two ETF behemoths are both top five in assets. SPY is number one with $380 billion, and the Qs are number five at $156 billion. And seven of their top ten holdings are the same big tech companies, just QQQ has doubled the position size. As for ARK, it's more concentrated than even the Qs. And ARC has a subjective active investment approach that's driven by the opinions of the managers, while QQQ is the top diversified tech heavy index fund, which is a far more impartial portfolio management machine. And as for risk control, none of these funds have downside protection. Many investors know the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, and stocks in general all have severe downside risk at times, and ARK-K is even more risk than the NASDAQ 100. So all three of these funds are very high risk. However, on a value-adjusted basis, I still give the win on exposure to the impartial NASDAQ 100 machine in QQQ. That takes us to the next category, which is performance. And Dave Krinsis, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Well, the performance from tech has been wild. The market rallied to start 2023, but when you include full year 2022 over the past 15 months through February month end 2023, the S&P and NASDAQ 100 are still down by 15 and 26% respectively. And this chart shows over the past 8.3 years since ARK's inception, ARK K returned 113%. The S&P strongly outperformed with 131%, and the NASDAQ 100 was spectacular, up 215%. So the NASDAQ 100 massively outperformed the S&P and delivered almost double ARC. And while the past 15 months were horrendous for risk assets, leveraged ETFs in crypto are still the future of investing, in my opinion, Remember, the ETF industry just had its 30th anniversary since the launch of SPY. And exchange-traded funds and the earlier version index funds were both ridiculed and resisted by investors at first before going on to dominate the market. As we explain in our book, Investable Benchmarks, this is all happening again right now with leveraged ETFs. This graph shows that over the past 8.3 years, the three times levered NASDAQ 100 wildcard, symbol TQQQ, which we call the American Dream ETF, TQQQ delivered 504%, which was four and a half times the return of ARC. And sure, TQQQ is more volatile and dangerous, so it does need to be hedged at times. 
And at ETFPM, we are extra cautious here, so we do not own TQQQ currently. But that can change fast. And given the amount of leverage we use in home ownership, it's just a matter of time before investors learn how to use leverage safely with stocks and bonds. So I give the win on long-term performance to wildcard ETF TQQQ. And in its absence here, I give the win to the unleveraged QQQ. Thank you, Dave. David, you're up next. Give us your analysis, please, on performance. Which of these three ETFs stands out? Well, this would have been a much different conversation if we were having it a year and a half ago. The easy, the easy winner would be ARK, but uh, 75% drawdown later, and we're having a, a different conversation. So if you're looking strictly at historical returns, then QQQ is, is going to be the winner here. I mean, it's outperforming the S&P 500 and ARK over uh, every recent time frame, the you know, three and the five years. So looking strictly backwards, that's going to be your winner. Of course, I'd point out that those returns were achieved during uh, zero interest rate policy in a, in a big QE environment. So that really give a big tailwind to large caps and growth in tech. And now we're in an environment where central banks are tightening again, and we're at 5% uh, Fed funds rate. So if we look forward, I think the environment will probably be quite a bit different. I don't think that uh, we're going to see quite as favorable an environment for growth in tech again. But, um, you know, we can't just look into the future and make picks here. Um, if we're looking strictly at the past and how things have performed up to this point, QQQ is the winner. Thank you very much, David. And that takes us to the mystery category where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they feel are pertinent to today's contest. So David Durking, tell us, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Well, my mystery battle category is going to be active share. And that's, you know, a little unfair considering you're, you know, looking at SPY and QQQ, two of the biggest index funds out there, which don't have active share. So obviously I'm looking at RK here. And I'm going to go back to the point I made earlier about how this fund is really a great diversifier because it has a 100% active share. So you're getting you know, true diversification when you pair this up with a SPY or a QQQ. You're getting exposure to industries that uh, aren't uh, heavily appearing in some of the big large cap indexes, some of the next generation names from you know, robotics and cloud computing. And you see some of that in the big indexes, but not quite as much as you'd see in our case. So um, again, I, I just really like how what a unique product it is. It's a great diversifier. So based on active share, I'm going to give the win to RK. Dave Krins is you're up next. Give us your mystery battle category. What is it and which of these ETFs wins it? Well, position size and risk control are critical to maximizing results in portfolio management. And at ETFPM, our ability to raise cash enables us to have more aggressive positions at times. And given the diversification in QQQ and SPY, they could both be up to 100% or more of our active portfolios while we do not trade exposure to RK. And regardless, if we ever did trade an ETF similar to RK, it would be a much smaller satellite position with a cap typically under 9%. So for position weighting, I call it a split decision between QQQ and SPY. Thank you very much, Dave. And now we've moved to the part of the show where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. And let me just say, so far, SPY has absolutely no votes. Wow, can you believe that? Who saw that coming? Dave Krinces, give us your final analysis. So Ron, to recap this epic tech-heavy aggressive growth battle, Passive indexing clearly outperformed subjective active management in this case. The right tech exposure was key, and the leading leveraged ETFs are still the future of investing, in my opinion. However, they are extra bumpy. The three times NASDAQ 100 TQQQ fell 82% over 13 months in the cocaine bear market of 2022, when stocks and bonds crashed simultaneously. And TQQQ also fell 73% in one month during the first quarter 20 corona crash. And 30 to 40% reversals happen often. So take super small baby steps and only use leverage if you're making money. And ETFPM is currently not using leverage. But all that said, this last graph shows over the past 13 years since its inception, 
the American Dream ETF has now returned 54 times your money. At the peak, it was over 210 times. And the S&P delivered less than four times your money. So TQQQ gained 14 times the S&P return. Considering how hard it is to beat the S&P, TQQQ delivering 14 times the S&P over 13 years is far beyond phenomenal and worthy of some media attention. TQQQ is easily the GOAT ETF, and you could say it's the Bill Russell of ETFs because TQQQ is mysteriously absent from the GOAT ETF discussion. So I give the aggressive growth equity battle win to the American Dream ETF TQQQ on long-term performance. And in its absence here, I give the win to the unleveraged version QQQ. Thank you, Dave. And I think it's more akin to Barry Bonds, quite frankly, because Barry was taking steroids and so is TQQQ. I don't know if they're taking the same dosages, but nevertheless, they're both- I don't think technology is the same as steroids, but okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, when you pair it with leverage, it can be. But it's technology. And technology, you know, just like ARC, you know, TQQQ using leverage is a disruptive technology for portfolio management. So it's, it's akin to the disruption that Kathy's looking for in ARC, although the returns since inception are vastly different. All right. Let's give uh, David Durking his final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Give it to us. Well, I'm sorry, I don't have the pop culture references to, to weave into this conversation nearly as well as you guys did, but I'll, I'll give it a try anyways. Uh, I, I think if you're just looking at pure core exposure for your portfolio, then SPY and QQQ would be the obvious choices for that. Or I'll, I'll mention the wild cards again, SPLG or QQQM, but they effectively do the same thing at a lower cost. So if that's your goal, I think you want to stick with one of those two. I'm going to give the win here to RK, and I know that's not going to make a lot of people, you know, happy, or, you know, they'll probably disagree with me. But I I view this in the sense of how different it is from a lot of different products out there. And charging 75 basis points for an active strategy wasn't really popular when it was launched. But uh, despite the ups and downs, I think it's really proven over time that, active management still has a place, especially when you're dealing with, you know, next-gen technologies like, uh, you know, robotics or even like cannabis or blockchain or things like that. I think active management, even at a higher cost, has a place. And I think RK is is one of the originators of that. So um, based on, again, the uniqueness of the product and how I think it will fit together with a broader portfolio in small chunks, I'm going to give the win to RK. Well, our judges have spoken, and according to my battle scorecard, this is a quadruple split decision between Art K, QQQ, TQQQ, and QQQM. Man, that's a lot of Qs. I'm all queued out, guys. And our judges uh, made some very, very strong points with uh, David Durking. He liked Art K. As that, as that particularly ETF, mentioning that, listen, it's a great diversifier if you own other funds like QQQ or SPY because it's got 100% active share. So it's not anything like any of those index-linked types of products. So uh, he liked RK as his choice. And, of course, he mentioned some of those investment themes within that particular ETF that he likes, like uh, like the cannabis and the blockchain technology and fintech and all that stuff. That's what RK has inside of it. And uh, David Krins is arguing in favor of the indexing. Of course, he likes leveraged indexing, and that was why he was so uh, pro-TQQQQ, throwing out some amazing performance numbers, and it's hard to argue with those long-term numbers, even though these types of products aren't generally used in that particular context. They're usually used as short-term investment tools, but again, The numbers are the numbers, and our judges brought it today. So thank you again to Dave and David for your outstanding analysis. We couldn't have done it without you. Keep up the great work. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, David. Happy March Madness, everyone. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor direction, Investments. So what did you think about today's ETF showdown? Post your comments 
in the description section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time. 